Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be talking about why I did not breastfeed my first baby. There are a ton of factors that go into this, a ton of things that I learned, a lot of things I would do differently, and a lot of reasons why we just physically couldn't make it work. So I want to go ahead and share all of that with you today. I am not here to tell you whether you should or shouldn't breastfeed. I'm also not here to be like justifying my decisions or my parenting style or like explaining myself or whatever. I just want to genuinely share with you my experience with the whole breastfeeding thing and some things I wish I would have known going into it. And like I said, some things I would totally do differently this next time around. I mostly just wanted to say before I jump into everything that fed is best. The most important thing is that you have a happy, healthy baby and everything else aside from that is completely your own parenting decision. This is just my experience. That's it. Let's jump into it. So like I said, there are a ton of factors that go into this and I kind of just want to break it down like point by point for you guys and just share like all of the little details that kind of went into why we didn't end up being able to breastfeed. So the very first thing I think that kind of made everything else all go wrong was just not doing enough research beforehand. I think my very first mistake right off the bat is just having a total lack of knowledge. I read the occasional Pinterest article while I was pregnant, but I didn't do any other research aside from that. I kind of figured that there would be people, nurses, and lactation specialists at the hospital that could help me with anything that I needed help with and that we would just figure it out when we got there. A lot of people told me before I had the baby that it was something that just kind of comes naturally and you and your baby just figure it out together and I didn't really look up any kind of tips or advice beforehand. And I thought that if we got into the situation where we were having a hard time, I would then go and seek out tips and advice. But honestly, that is so not the right approach. You do not want to be in the thick of everything, struggling, then trying to find out what to do differently and what's going wrong. Uh, you kind of want to have the knowledge beforehand to prepare yourself so that you don't get caught in a situation where everything is going wrong and you have no idea what to do. There is so much more that goes into breastfeeding than you really realize and you definitely want to be armed with all of the information and the knowledge about all of that before you are in the trenches of battle trying to figure it all out and being just completely lost and uninformed. So the next thing that I wanted to touch on is that nobody in my family has really breastfed. While this isn't like a super huge influence on why I wasn't able to breastfeed, it definitely is kind of a factor. My mom did formula with both myself and my brother and my only other family member that has kids. I have one cousin on my mom's side that has kids and she's formula fed all of her babies. I just didn't have anyone to ask for help or get advice from in my own personal life around me. Now I have a sister-in-law who is breastfeeding, so next time around I have somebody close to me that can come over to my house and help me, give me advice and tips, pass on like nursing breastfeeding items if I need them and don't have them. I could like borrow her pump or whatever. Like I have somebody in my life now that I'm close with that can help me and offer that advice and support and I didn't when I had Ellie. So the next thing I wanted to touch on is being very unprepared. I did not buy any nursing bras. I did not buy any nursing tanks. I didn't have any breast pads. I didn't have any nipple cream. I didn't buy anything ahead of time. I had absolutely zero supplies to help me out. My thought process was that I didn't want to go out and buy all of these things and then not stick with breastfeeding and have spent all of this money and invested all of this into stuff that just gets put into a box. I kind of thought that if I ended up sticking with breastfeeding after a couple of weeks, I would go out and buy everything that I needed. Well, to be completely honest with you, that's kind of like showing up on the first day of a job to be a chef and not having any knives or kitchen utensils to cook with. Although the pots and the pans are there, the basic necessity things that you would need, 
if you don't have any utensils or anything to help you with your job, you're not gonna be very good at your job. I honestly look back and just cringe at myself. You have to have all of the tools that you need to be successful, otherwise you're not gonna set yourself up for success. And what if I had not bought a single diaper for the baby and just thought like, oh, they'll have diapers at the hospital and then I can just swing through the store on the way home and get them. Like that would have been horrible for me. I would have made my life so much harder. So I don't know why I was so unprepared, but I really should have made sure I had everything that I needed. And I'm definitely this next time around making sure that I am better set up to help myself. The fourth thing I want to touch on is just being so overwhelmed. Having a baby and becoming a mother is scary and overwhelming no matter what the situation is. I personally had a c-section. I was very very scared to have the actual surgery. It was terrifying and I was so focused on the surgery part of having a baby that I didn't think about like what to expect after she was here. So I was really prepping myself for the surgery and researching the C-section a lot. And then I didn't think about anything else afterwards. So when everything else afterwards happened and all of a sudden I had a crying, screaming, hungry baby that I had to try to latch on, it was just really overwhelming. I hadn't prepared myself for that. There was a lot happening. I actually found out post-surgery that I am anemic. I was hemorrhaging all over the place, losing a ton of blood. The nurses were really focused on me and nobody really helped me figure out how to latch the baby on. We had a ton of visitors, a ton of people, so I didn't have the time to like pull out my boobs in front of everybody and breastfeed. And I just should have set aside a quiet minute to take a deep breath, not be so overwhelmed, and sit down with the nurse and figure it out. And I just didn't get that. And also breastfeeding in general is just so overwhelming. All of a sudden I have a nurse in my room drawing diagrams of like where the baby's mouth should be on the nipple. And I had people touching my boobs and trying to help. And I was leaking milk all over the place. And then they were putting nipple shields and stuff on me. And I didn't even know nipple shields existed until that day. And there was just a lot of like little pieces and gadgets and things that I just didn't, I just didn't know what was going on. I was just really overwhelmed. There was a lot happening and um, I just wish that I had, again, done more research ahead of time and kind of known what to expect and what was going on. If I had been familiar with different holds and different latches and all kinds of different like breastfeeding accessories like nipple shields and pumping and all that kind of stuff, I think that if I'd known about all of that beforehand and kind of been more familiar with all of that beforehand, it probably would have gone a lot different for me. This is probably the biggest factor for me personally. I don't know if there's really anything that you can learn from that here. But I had so much physical drain at that point. That really played a huge factor for me in why I wasn't able to breastfeed. Again, having a C-section is hard. I lost a ton of blood and I was really, really weak, not doing great, hadn't slept in 24 hours. And my body physically, I couldn't hold her to latch her on. I had to use a nursing pillow. So... I just physically, I couldn't stay awake. I was so drained. I did not have anything left in me to give by the end of the day to feed the baby. I just had a huge physically demanding surgery and recovery and postpartum period that I just wasn't able to find the strength in myself to feed the baby at that point. So for me, honestly, the biggest part was just being so physically drained. I also had a lot of anxiety about the baby and the baby's needs being met. I was a very anxious new parent. I am a very highly anxious person in general. I was diagnosed with anxiety at a very, very early age in my childhood. And I had really heightened anxiety during my pregnancy and that didn't go away once I had the baby. I remember laying there and just watching her to make sure that she was breathing, 
for like hours on end. I didn't want to put her down. Even after we got home from the hospital, I remember not sleeping because I was just watching her to make sure she was still alive. Even still, she's one and I send my husband into her room at midnight sometimes to make sure that she's okay. <laughs> and I'm just a very anxious person. And I feel like not knowing exactly how much food she was getting is something that really triggered my anxiety a lot. I didn't trust my own body to know that I was just producing enough for her. Um, the only way you can really keep track of whether or not a newborn is getting enough milk is by timing how long you're breastfeeding for and checking their diapers. And I was just so scared that she wasn't eating enough that once we actually gave her a bottle and I could see like a set marker number of ounces that she was eating. It was such a huge relief for me. It gave me so much peace of mind to know exactly how much she was getting. So for me personally, formula just made more sense for my mental state. I think that a big reason why I was able to avoid postpartum depression is because I didn't have that anxiety and that pressure on myself of breastfeeding. So for me personally, mentally, formula was a huge relief for me. The next thing that I want to touch on was constantly trying to fix her latch and her just not getting the hang of latching on. Again, this is a huge factor. Ellie had an extremely hard time latching on. The first maybe two times that I put her on, she latched and she did great for that first day. That first night and the second day in the hospital were horrible. I had a couple of different lactation consultants come in and help me and they were able to get her latched but when I did it myself I just couldn't and it was it was really hard. My mother-in-law was very supportive of me breastfeeding and she was really adamant that I keep trying with it so I remember she offered to come and help. She really wanted to come like look and see if what she could offer advice wise to help me latch her on. So I remember she came kind of as like a last ditch effort. My very last attempt to like latch Ellie on was with my mother-in-law there. So after 45 minutes of trying to get her and her crying and her unlatching and switching her sides and switching her holds and everything and anything we could think of, 45 minutes later, I remember my mother-in-law finally looking at me and saying, yeah, maybe you should just call a nurse for some formula. <laughs> so for her, of all people, to be throwing in the towel on that was kind of saying a lot, but we did try for a really long time. We tried everything we could think of, and Ellie just had a hard time latching. So what ended up being kind of the final nail in the coffin for me was that my doctor's office was doing a clinical study on a particular brand of formula. So for this particular study, you had to be on exclusively their formula. They provided it for you for free for 16 weeks and you kept track of the baby's mood, fussiness, diaper changes, how much they were drinking, etc. For the 16 weeks, we went to doctor's appointments every couple of weeks and then I think that they did a blood draw at the very end um, and we were provided with the formula. So per the guidelines of the study, we had to have her exclusively on their formula and we had to switch her to the formula before we left the hospital. So we kind of were left with this decision to make and ultimately she had been on formula for a couple of days. She was doing good on it. So we decided to go ahead and do the formula study. I think had that not been a factor, I probably would have tried breastfeeding again once we got home. I would have tried supplementing. I definitely would have pumped and given her that in a bottle instead. But because she had to be exclusively on this formula, that's kind of what did it for us. So later on, <laughs> recently, and by recently, I mean very recently, like within the last couple weeks, I learned about lip ties. I was watching somebody else's breastfeeding video leading up to me getting ready to breastfeed my next baby. She discussed lip ties and tongue ties being one of the first things that you should check for if your baby is having a hard time latching. I personally do have a tongue tie. I am tongue tied still. My mom never corrected it. Um, so I knew what to look for for a tongue tie. I knew Ellie wasn't tongue tied. She doesn't have a hard time sticking out her tongue. So I looked for that right away after she was born and I knew she was good. 
Um, but I didn't know about lip ties at all. I had no idea what a lip tie was until she was talking about it. And then I did a little bit of research into it and I checked Ellie and sure enough, she definitely does have a lip tie. I am kind of frustrated and I'm also kind of relieved at the same time about this. I am frustrated because there are a lot of nurses and doctors and lactation specialists at the hospital that are professionals that are supposed to know about these things and look for these things and help you through that. And nobody looked, nobody caught it. We take her to a doctor's office that like rotates doctors. So she has seen a ton of doctors, nobody caught it. And the lactation consultant, when we had a hard time watching her, didn't even think to check her for that. So I literally did not know what a lip tie was until she was a year old, 12 months old, and I find out that she has a lip tie and that is why she could not physically latch. So I am kind of frustrated for that reason because had we known and had that been a factor that we knew at the hospital at the time, we definitely would have just gotten it corrected and breastfed her, 100%. So I'm a little bit frustrated because I totally could have corrected it and breastfed her this entire time, but I'm also kind of relieved because I have spent the last 12 months thinking that I have something wrong with my body, my nipples aren't shaped right, I don't produce enough milk, there's something wrong that she wasn't able to breastfeed. So I'm a little bit relieved to actually find out that it is something that was wrong with her and that she physically wasn't able to because that means that now I know what to check with for other babies and I probably will have a really high likelihood of being able to successfully breastfeed other babies but I literally thought that there was something wrong with my body, that it was my fault. And I've tried a million times to think of what I could have done differently. And ultimately it came down to her just not being able to. So I am kind of relieved that now I will probably have a much easier time with my next child. So that's a comforting feeling, but also we have to go get her lip tie clips now, which kind of sucks, but at least we know what the issue is. In the end, it all turned out for the best for us because when she was eight weeks old, I was hospitalized for three weeks and um, I was really, really sick for months after that. So we would have had to switch her to formula very early on in her life anyway. So for us to have the formula study and have been provided with free formula for 16 weeks was huge and it was such a blessing. So formula ended up being the exact right choice for our baby. She is now a happy, healthy, cute little one-year-old. But that is my story and why we did not breastfeed. So hopefully there are some things that you can learn from all of this. Hopefully this just kind of explained some of my experience and where I'm coming from. And I really hope that if you are an expecting mom, if you're expecting your first baby, I'm so glad that you are here and that you are doing the research and trying to educate yourself before the baby comes. It's very, very important to do that. So please, if you are expecting, continue to do more research. And even if you are a breastfeeding mom, continue to do more research. There's always more to learn about it. So... Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you so much for being here. I have a ton of other mommy and pregnancy related videos. If you are interested in any of those, I will go ahead and link the entire playlist down below for you. But again, thank you for being here and for subscribing and I will see you guys next time. Bye.